going to choose a random product from Amazon and we're going to model, texture and render this in Blender. And once it's ready, I'm going to show this off to other companies and I can tell them to give me some money in exchange for the same animation with their product. So first of all, we're going to take this picture and use it as a reference in Blender. If we open the image up, we can just press right click, open image in new tab and now we can save this onto our computer. I made a new folder where I'm going to put all the images and textures and references, whatever I need for this particular project. Then in Blender, we're going to go to side view, shift A, image, reference, and we're going to load up that picture into our scene. Now we're going to throw this into the background and add some transparency so it's not so bright. I'm going to lift this up so it's sitting on top of the Y axis. Then with shift A, we're going to add a circle and the circle is going to have around 12 vertices. The reason that I'm only using 12 vertices is so that I can subdivide this later without adding way too many polygons. Then go back to side view, scale this up so it fits the size of the bottle, fill the circle with F then extrude it up so it gets up to the neck of the bottle. Then at the top we're going to extrude this and scale down. And based on these vertices on the outside over here I can tell how large this circle currently is. Once it's the right size I'm going to extrude it up. Then once again extrude and scale up so we make this small part at the top of the neck. Extrude again, then extrude one more time and now we're creating the cap and extrude it again to get to the top of the bottle. We're going to add an extra loop cut and we're going to scale the top edge loop down because it looks like there's some kind of an angle going on over here. These little lines that you see at the cap of the bottle, we're going to create those later on with a normal map. Now we're going to take this edge loop and bevel it with control B. I'm going to scroll down to reduce the number of cuts on the bevel. We're also going to add a small bevel with two segments in a shape of one over here. The purpose of this is just to control the subdivision surface modifier once we add it later on. We're also going to bevel the bottom like this. Maybe we can extrude this inwards a little bit because it probably has this type of shape at the bottom. And now select this object in object mode and press Ctrl 2 to add two levels of subdivision. We're going to select all the edge loops which are supposed to be sharp. Then press N and in the item menu set the mean increase to 1. This is going to make those corners sharp. And I'm going to add an extra loop cut down here and up here so that I can control this shape a little bit better. Now with Ctrl A apply the subdivision surface modifier. Select all this shit up here and delete it. I'm going to replace that with a simple circle by filling in the edge loop. Now select everything and set the mean crease to zero to get rid of these creases which we just marked because we don't need them anymore. You can also get rid of some of these extra edge loops over here if you want to control your polygon count. So select the ones you want to get rid of then press X dissolve edges. I'm also going to get rid of some of these down here and some of these over here. I'm not too worried about it in this case but if you are worried about it then just delete some more of them. Now go to object shade smooth and when we shade smooth this currently looks atrocious which is why we're going to add a tiny bevel. Again, shape one and two segments. And we're going to do the same thing on all these other sharp corners over here. So select them all and control B and add a tiny bevel. Now the model is finished, we can start adding some textures. Next, we have to UV unwrap this model. Apart from the label, the bottle is just going to be a simple flat material. But we have to unwrap this part where the label is going to be placed. And we also have to unwrap the cap. To make things easier, I'm going to get rid of all these horizontal loop cuts around the label part of the bottle. So select them all, X dissolve edges. This is going to make sure that these lines are completely straight. And that way I'll be sure to not have any problems when I'm UV unwrapping this. Now select this edge and this edge, Control E, mark seam. Then we're going to mark another seam on this corner over here and on this little corner up here. We're also going to mark these two edge loops as seams and finally this edge up here. All this other shit, I don't really care if it gets distorted because it's not going to be any texture, it's just going to be a base color. But we are going to need a vertical loop cut along this entire shape. Except maybe on this part over here because we don't really care about this one. So we can just deselect all of these edges here using a brush tool and also these down here. Now Control E, Mark Seam, and we're going to switch to the shading workspace. Then create a new material and now we're going to test whether we UV unwrap this shit correctly. So name this material UV Test, Shift A, Image Texture. Click and generate a new image, name that UV test, set the resolution to whatever, the default is fine. Set the generated type to UV grid and click OK. Now plug that into base color, select the object, go to edit mode, U unwrap. As you can see now we can clearly tell whether or not this is UV unwrapped correctly. The label is unwrapped perfectly, the bottom part is a little bit distorted over here but we said we don't care about that. We are going to have to take care of this shit around the bottle cap because this has to be perfectly straight. So go to the UV editing workspace. In face select mode, press L to select this island over here. And we're going to have to make sure that this is not curved like this. It has to be perfectly straight. I'm pretty sure there's an add-on that does this for you automatically. But I can't remember what it is, so I'll just do it manually this time. I don't really fuck with add-ons anyway unless they're built into Blender. So if it is, then let me know in the comments what it is. We're going to go to edge select mode and alt right click, shift, alt right click. We're going to select all the vertical edge loops on this island. Then we're going to set the pivot point to individual origins. 
SX0. Now these lines are perfectly straight. Then with Control I, we're going to invert the selection and scale everything to zero on the Y axis. Now this is perfectly straight and you can see this in your material preview. So go back to the shading workspace. Let's start adding some materials. We're going to get rid of the UV test material and generate a new material. This one will be called glass. That has to be black and set the roughness to zero or something very close to zero to make it more realistic. Then alt right click to select this face loop around here, add a new material slot, generate a new material and assign that to this part. This is going to be the label. We're going to get back to that later. Then with L select the bottle cap as well as the top island. Again, generate a new material for that and assign it there. This one has to be black. It also has to be a bit more shiny, but not quite as shiny as the glass. We're going to name this one cap and the other one's going to be named label. Now, before we create the label, let's make the normal map for the bottle cap. So first, we're going to model these lines here on a separate surface. We're going to bake that as a normal map and we're going to apply that normal map to the bottle cap. I'm going to speed run this shit for this video, but I have plenty of tutorials about this on my channel. So go check those out if you want to learn more about this technique. Add a new plane and move that thing to the side somewhere. Make a loop cut on this plane like this, scale it down on the Y axis and add a vertical loop cut like this. Now take the face on the right side and extrude it down a little bit. Take this edge down here and push it up on the X axis. Delete this face over here. Then take these three vertices and push them down a little bit on the X axis. Set the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Place the 3D cursor over here. Select this edge, extrude, right click and scale it to zero on the Y axis. Select everything and with M, merge vertices by distance. Then we're going to select this face and scale it down on the Y axis a little bit just so that from top view we can see this face on the side here and now we're going to add an array modifier set the factor to one on the y axis because we want to push this along the y axis increase the count to some crazy shit like probably 256 and if you want to be really cool then we can add some more loop cuts over here and that way we can take some of these faces and push them inwards a little bit to make this part appear curved now select this and go to object shade auto smooth and we're now ready to bake this as a normal map we're probably not going to need this many fucking instances because we can just tile this as we apply it on the UV map. So set the count to something more reasonable like 32. It's going to be more controllable when we bake it. Now shift A and add another plane. Lift that plane up a little bit. And from top view, make this plane larger than this object. We're going to make sure that this is seamless by making sure that the border of the plane is exactly on the middle of one of the bars. Then place a 3D cursor on this edge. Set the pivot point to 3D cursor. And then scale it to make sure that the same thing is happening on the other side. And now we should be okay. If you're ever modeling an object which has some other normal maps that you need, such as some knurling or something else at some other point, also model those and place them next to this object inside this frame somewhere. So that way you can also bake it at the same time. Just make sure that that other object is joined together with this object. We're going to apply the array modifier just in case and merge all the vertices by distance. And we also have to check the normals here before we can bake this. So go to viewport overlays, face orientation, make sure everything is blue. If anything is red when you look at it from the top, then select it, select all the geometry and edit mode and press shift N to recalculate the normals. Now double check to make sure that this plane is slightly above the surface that we just modeled. Then go to the shading workspace, generate a new material and name that normal map. In that normal map, we're going to create a new image texture node, generate a new image. The default resolution should be fine for this one. And the new image is going to be called cap normal map set the generated type to blank check 32 bit float click ok and set the color space to non-color now you can preview this image over here currently it's black because we didn't bake a normal map yet it's just a blank fucking image now select the surface which we model and then shift select the plane above it go to render properties set the render engine to cycles scroll down into the bake menu set the bake type to normal and check selected to active now we're going to bake from the surface onto the image of the plane we're going to reduce the number of samples because for some reason this is going to make our baking process faster. And now just hit bake and sit back and relax for a second. Once the normal map is baked, we're going to open this little menu over here. Go to image, click on save as and save this shit into the bottle folder. Now select the bottle and use the full stop or the delete button on the number pad to focus on it. Go back to material preview, select the bottle cap material. And in the shader editor, we're going to add a new image texture node. In that image texture node, we're going to load the cap normal map, which we just baked. Add a normal map node, plug color into color and normal into normal like this. Now go back to UV editing, go to face select mode and hover over the cap. Press L to select this part around the cap. Transform this island so that this edge over here doesn't stick too far from this side. And we're going to have to scale this to minus one of the X axis and then bring it back to the side because we need this bar over here to be visible down here at the bottom of the cap. And this looks pretty good. If you want to, you can scale this further on the Y axis to make more of these little bars fit onto the cap. 
That way it's going to look more detailed, but this is up to you what you think looks best. Also take the top part of the cap and on this UV map, push it to the side somewhere so it doesn't get any of the bars on it. Now this label on the product has some kind of simple design in the middle and it has some leaves around it. I'm going to design this shit in PaintNet. If you don't have PaintNet, get PaintNet, it's free. If you're using Windows, it's gonna work. If you're using Mac OS, you're fucked. So I'm gonna take some of these images such as this one over here, right click, copy image, and in PaintNet, I'm gonna press Control N. This one is an absolutely enormous image. I don't want it to be that big, so I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Delete everything and Control V to paste this in there. Keep canvas size. And while holding shift, we're going to scale this down a little bit so it's not that big. Now we have this saved over here for later. And I got a bunch of other images like this as well. Now press Control N and we're going to generate a new canvas, which is going to be the one we're going to use for the label. So set the width to 2048 and the height to 1024. I'm going to select this little shape tool over here. Set the shape type to rectangle. Click this to make it filled. Then I'll hold down shift and I'll create a nice little square like this. I'm now going to add a new layer so that I can design the logo. I'm not gonna copy their exact logo because they might sue me. So I'll use the circle tool. I'll make it so that it's not filled. Set the brush size to something like 11. And with shift, I'm going to create a new little circle like this. I'm going to select one half of this circle and I'll delete that one half. Then in a new layer, I'm going to add a small circle up here like this. I'm gonna make sure that's aligned with the top over here. And I'm going to delete one half of this circle. Then I'll take the lower half of the semicircle, control X and control V. This is gonna be placed somewhere down here. I'll merge these layers together. Now I'll use my line tool to connect these. I'll select this part, control X and push it to the side a little bit. And now I'm also going to connect this part and this part. Don't ask me what this is supposed to be, but we're also going to add a little heart shape so it looks cute and healthy. Then I'm going to use my text tool to create some text. Pick whatever font you like for this. I'm gonna increase my text size and I'm gonna write something like BD energy. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Lowercase looks a little bit cooler than uppercase. Maybe we can make this bold as well. Then we're going to set the color to white. We're going to write magnesium. And I can't pronounce this second word, so I'm just going to write it and place that text somewhere over here. Now I want another little heart down here. Don't ask me what this shit is. It's just supposed to look like a little capsule. So we're gonna take this, control X, control V, rotate it by 45 degrees. Now we're gonna one up this company. So we're gonna write 200 capsules. We're gonna set the text size to something like this. And we're also going to write vegan so that if you're vegan, you can also take these pills. I'm not gonna buy them just because they're vegan. Now we're just gonna add some leaves. So control A, control C, add a new layer, control V. We're going to scale that down a little bit and place it somewhere like this. Then this leaf over here looks way too realistic for this purpose. Effects, blurs, and add a little bit of blur. Once we add the blur, we're gonna go to adjustments, posterize, and we're gonna make it look something more like this. Then we're gonna go to effect blurs one more time and make it a little bit blurry again. Add a new layer, add another leaf there. Then we're gonna take these two leaves and in another layer, we're going to place those somewhere. We're gonna rotate them a little bit, scale them down and they're gonna be sticking into the image from up here. And the final leaf is going to be placed somewhere on this side over here. If you want to, you can always add some more leaves around this thing. If you want to go add some flowers or some bananas or some shit, I don't know, whatever you wanna put in there, you can put it in there. We're going to merge all the layers for all the leaves. Then we're gonna go back to Google and I searched something like vitamin bottle chart. So now I can take this image, control N to add that to new image. And I'm gonna cover the company name so I don't get sued. Then we can flatten this entire canvas with control shift F, copy it, create a new canvas, which is going to be a little bit wider, paste it there. And we're also going to paste this little chart somewhere in there. Scale that down a little bit and place it somewhere on the side over here. And now we have everything that we need for our label. So file, save as. We're gonna save this image and name it label. Then in Blender, we're gonna go to the shading workspace go to the label material, add a new image texture node, and then open up the label. Once you open up the label, you can plug that shit into base color, then go back to UV editing, take this entire thing, U unwrap, rotate by 90 degrees, and now we can just scale this up until it fits the bottle. We have to rotate by 180 degrees. Now look how pretty that bottle looks. Now we're gonna make a simple scene for this bottle so we can render it as some kind of animation or some bullshit. So let's add a new plane and scale it way up. We're going to extrude the back edge upwards. Then we're going to duplicate the bottle and place it somewhere in the background. Now with control alt zero, I'm going to align my camera with my view. We're going to zoom in a little bit, place this bottle somewhere in the background like this. I want my aspect ratio to be one on one. So I set my resolution to 720 by 720. Now in the camera properties, you can control your focal length and all this other shit. You can also add a little bit of depth of field to make the background bottle a bit blurry. 
Then I want a light source, which is going to be a spotlight. We'll place that way out here and rotate it so it's facing the scene. And we're also going to visit this website called HDRI Haven and download some kind of HDRI, which has some mild but day kind of lighting. This one over here looks pretty cute, so I'm going to download that one. Now back in the shading workspace in Blender, we're going to set the shader type to world and now we can control the world texture, the environment texture. So shift A, environment texture node, then open and we're going to locate the HDRI image which we just downloaded. Now plug that shit into color, go to camera view with zero and then in cycles we're going to go to viewport, render shading. We're going to align this light so it's pointing directly towards the scene there. We're going to set the power to something crazy like 22,000. Then with our 3D cursor placed on this light, go to Shift A, Image, Images as Planes. And we're going to use some of the leaves that we saved for our vitamin bottle like this here. Now this is a transparent image and we're going to use this to cast a shadow onto the scene. So rotate this and push it backwards so it's in between the light source and the scene. We're going to scale that up a bit and we're going to duplicate it once so we have two examples of these leaves right here. Reduce the intensity of the HDRI image lighting. And now if we increase the power of the light source, we're going to see the shadows in the background of our scene. Currently, the shadows are a bit too sharp. So we're going to select the light and we're going to increase the radius value a little bit. This is going to make the shadows a little bit more blurry. Give the light a bit of a warm color like this. And we're going to have to animate these leaves so that they're swinging left and right a little bit. So the shadows are going to look cooler in the render. Add a loop cut like this, slide this vertex, shift S, snap the cursor over here and place the origin right there. Do the same thing for this leaf over here. Then in the animation workspace, we're going to focus on this leaf. First, we're going to set a keyframe where it's placed like this. Then we're going to move the timeline marker a little bit further down the line to something like frame 100. And we're going to place another keyframe right there with the same rotation. Then in between those two keyframes, we're going to rotate it like this and create another keyframe. Now this is going to be swinging left and right in the animation. We're going to do the same thing on the other leaf. First, create two identical keyframes. Then in between those two keyframes, add a little bit of rotation to the leaf and place another keyframe. Now we're going to end our animation at frame 100 where the last keyframe is placed. So now if we play our animation, these leaves are going to be swinging left and right and it's going to be on loop. It's really difficult to see this shit on our render preview. So we're just going to have to hope that it's going to look good in the final fucking result. Anyway, now set the render samples. You're probably going to need something like at least 256. I just want a quick preview for this video. And then afterwards, I'm going to render this in higher resolution, and higher samples and all this other shit. So I'm going to set my samples to 100. I'm going to set my resolution to something like 700 by 700. Since I'm using 24 FPS, that means 24 frames is one second. You can adjust your animation accordingly. I'm going to use something like 70 frames. So end the animation on 70 frames. And we're going to have approximately a three second animation. Now set the file format to FFmpeg video. These default settings should be fine. Set your container to MPEG4. And now these settings should be fine. Then just set your destination folder over here. I'm going to name this file vitamin bottle and then just go up here to render, render animation. Now, the more details you add to this animation, the more impressed companies are going to be by it. I would recommend you take a little video like this and you tell them, hey guys, I made this for you. If you're interested in working together, then let's have a conversation. And if you do this enough time, someone's going to be interested and now you're making some money. Before you know it, you're charging thousands of dollars for animations, which are probably a little bit more complicated than this. But the principle is the same. You just have to maybe add a few more things into the scene and make it a little bit longer. If you want to learn more about the modeling techniques that I use in Blender, then check out my fucking ebook. I'll put the link in the description. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.